In this discussion, we're going to look at a single game of tennis being played by two people, the server and the other person not serving. In tennis, usually the server has an advantage, at least if that person has a good serve. P is the probability the server wins any given point, and Q, which is 1 minus P, is the probability the other player wins. And generally, if the two players are relatively equal in, in uh, ability, uh, P will be higher than Q because of the advantage that the server has. Here are all the different scores that can occur in this tennis game between the server and the non-server. Let's track one possible scenario. Let's say that on the first point the server wins it to go up 15-0. Then the server wins another point to be up 30-0. Then the non-server wins a point, so it's 30-15. Then the server wins again to go up 40-15. Then the server loses the next point, but he's still a point ahead, so it's server's advantage. And let's say the non-server wins the next point, so it goes to deuce. Then the server wins a point, so it goes back to server's advantage. Then the server wins again, so the server's two points ahead and wins the game, and that's an absorbing state. The server has won the game. The game starts out, of course, with the score being 0 to 0. Now, after the first point is played, either the server will have won that point, so the server will be ahead 15 to 0, or the non-server will have won the point, so that the non-server will be ahead 15 to 0. And those probabilities are P and Q. After another point has been played, the score will be one of the scores shown here, if the server was up 15-0 after the first point, then he wins another point, and it goes to 30-0. He loses the next point, and it goes to 15-all. Fill in the probabilities of those two transitions. If the non-server was up 15-0, then server wins, and it goes to 15-all. Non-server wins again, and it goes 30-0. So, what are the possible scores after another point is played? And they're the ones that are showing here. Let's see how we get there. If the server's up 30 to 0 and wins another point, it goes to 40 to 0. If the server loses the next point, then it goes to 30-15. From the state where it's tied at 15 all, if the server wins, then the server goes up 30-15. If the non-server wins, then the non-server goes up 30 to 15. And from the state where the non-server is up 30 to 0, it either goes to non-server up 30 to 15 or non-server up 40 to 0. What are the possible scores after another point has been played? From the case where the server is ahead 40 to 0, if the server wins another point, he's won the game. If he loses the point, it goes to 40-15. So let's fill in those two transitions. Uh, probability P and Q. From the case where the server is up 30 to 15, if he wins the next point, it's 40 15. If he loses it, it goes to 30 30, which is deuce. That's what you call it in tennis when the score is tied, and any player to win the game needs to get two points ahead. From the case where the non server is ahead 30 to 15, it can go to deuce if the server wins the point or it can go to non-server leading 40-15 if the non-server wins another point. And from this final case of 40-0, it can go to 40-15 if the server wins, or to game over non-server winning if the non-server wins another point. So we've already hit the two absorbing states, S winning or N winning means game over, 
Those are the two absorbing states. The server wins the game or the non-server wins the game. Any game is going to wind up one of those two things happening. Now the states that haven't appeared yet are the states where it's somebody's advantage. And we're now showing those. Server's advantage means if server wins the next point, server's won the game. If server loses, it goes back to deuce. And similarly, when non-server has advantage. So the transition probabilities that are missing are server's advantage and server wins, it's game over. Server's advantage and server loses, it goes back to deuce. Non-server's advantage and non-server wins, it goes to game over. Server wins, it goes back to deuce. From server being ahead 40-15, if server loses, it goes to server's advantage because server's still a point ahead. If server wins, it's game over. From non-server ahead 40-15, if non-server wins, it's game over. Non-server loses, non-server's still a point ahead, so it goes to non-server's advantage. And let's see, I need a Q right here. And we still need to fill in the probabilities going from deuce. From deuce, if server wins, it goes to server's advantage. And if non-server wins, it goes to non-server's advantage. So I think that has all the probabilities now filled in. We have... The two black boxes representing the two absorbing states, the game will end when somebody wins. Let's catalog the non-absorbing states. Zero, zero, where we start, is of course non-absorbing. And after one point has been played, somebody will be ahead 15 to zero. After two points have been played, somebody will be ahead 30 to zero, or else it'll be tied. After three points have been played, we'll be at one of these places. And then after four points, we might be here or here. Now every state I've circled, every non-absorbing state I've circled so far is a state we can enter only once. But the remaining ones, deuce, server's advantage, and non-server's advantage, are states where you can cycle through any number of times. But in any case, along with our two absorbing states, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 non-absorbing states. So altogether that's 17 states. So we're looking at a 17-state Markov chain. So our transition matrix would be a 17 by 17 matrix. The transition matrix will be a 17 by 17 matrix. Um, let's remember what the pattern has to look like. Remember, we know that we have two absorbing states. So that means, since we always list our absorbing states first, that the first row will be a 1 followed by all zeros. And the second row will look like this. And because we have two absorbing states, we slice off the first two columns and the first two rows. And we name this piece R and this piece Q. So Q will be 15 by 15. And the primary computation we have to do with an absorbing Markov chain is to find the end where we take the identity matrix the same size as Q, so that's the 15 by 15 identity matrix, subtract off Q, find the inverse of that, and that's what's called N. That's a very important matrix that gives us a lot of information. And then the other computation, if we want to determine the probability of entering the two absorbing states, is we do B equals N times R. So in this case, 
that would be multiplying a 15 by 15 matrix times a 15 rows, two column matrix. So B would have what? It would be 15 by 15 times 15 by 2, so it would be a 15 by 2 matrix itself. Um, but the point is, if we do those two matrix computations, then we can answer um, pretty much any question that we're asked about this absorbing Markov chain. And the matrix tool does this computation rather nicely. That sounds like a lot of work. Since Q is 15 by 15, that means it's got 225 entries. But the 80 to 90 percent of them are zeros. So the easy way to enter this matrix Q into the matrix tool is just to type out a, a row of 15 zeros and then copy and paste that 15 times to give you a matrix full of zeros and then simply change the, the few entries that need to be something else. Uh, so you don't have very much editing, do, editing to do to, make, to change that into the matrix that you actually want to enter into the matrix tool. Here are examples of questions that would be of interest to solve. Um, you need to know, of course, what the probabilities P and Q are, but once you, once you have numerical values, uh, what, what are the chances that the server will actually win the game? You can do that calculation based on those matrices. Um, expected value for number of points played in the game. On average, how long will the game go? On average, how many times will the score be tied at deuce? These are the kinds of things that you can milk out of those uh, two matrices we were just talking about, the matrix N and the matrix B.